Hello everybody and welcome and welcome back to those of y'all who've been here before to uh, Jimmy's Neighborhood Bees. I'm Jimmy and um, we keep bees in a regular suburban neighborhood in Central Virginia, Chesterfield County. Um, she just told me I got a delivery. Anyway, uh, so we keep uh, bees in a regular neighborhood, regular, uh, you know, backyard. So you can do it too if you got limited space. Basically, that's what I show here. I'm not commercial, I'm not sideline. I'm just a neighborhood guy who, who enjoys bees. Um, remind everybody again, it's, it's June now. Um, so coming up shortly is the Honey Bee Festival, June 24th, 10 to two. Um, I'll put the, uh, the little thing right there. And then uh, also, to let you know, if you're coming out, if you want to see me for the most of the day, I'm going to be in the um, honey extraction demonstration uh, for the most part. So I'll be demonstrating how to extract honey. I may even bring uh, an empty flow frame to show that there's different ways of getting honey and maybe even a Ross round and explain how those would work. Um, anyway. So, um, what I'm going to do today, I just, I moved the uh, farmhouse hive, that's what I'm calling it, um, to the back, uh, back there, and I put the, I moved the swarm that I caught next to it, because I'm going to uh, put those bees, the swarm catch, in that hive, in the farmhouse hive, uh, and those will be going up to West Virginia. Um, I, they've been closed up for about a day, two days now. Um, so it's just sitting, physically sitting right next to the hive where they're going to go. Uh, probably tonight around midnight, I'm going to uh, open the dial. Uh, I'll put a branch or two in, of foliage in front of it so that in the morning, because today it's a little off and on rainy. So then I'm not going to do anything today during the day. But this evening or tonight, 11, 12 o'clock, whatever, I'm going to go ahead and open the dial and uh, put the branch in front of them. And uh, that way, when they come out, it'll be day three. They'll orientate, hopefully, to that area. And then maybe later on in the afternoon, I will either install them into the uh, farmhouse hive. Uh, I did a couple of modifications, a couple of things that I wanted to do. So I'm going to take you out there and show you that. But I'm going to read the fortune before we go out. And um, let's find where I was. Should have on my reading glasses, right? They're right here. Anyway, um, you are a bundle of energy, always on the go. Okay, that's not as so much a fortune as it is a, I don't know. But anyway, that's what was in the cookie. That's what's in the book. Uh, you're you're a bundle of energy, always on the go. Is that what he said? Yeah, that's what he said. Anyway, so that's the fortune for today. Um, so yeah, let me, let me, I got a flow key. This is a flow key for those of y'all who don't know about the flow frames. This is how you open it to extract the honey and then reset it so that the bees can refill it. Um, I wanted to, because my daughter's hive is going to have a couple of, or I think I have one or two extra flow frames. She's going to have them there and I want to keep a key with that hive. So I, I don't know if I even finished it. I can't remember. It started raining. But I'm going to have a place to put the flow hive key as well as um, a J hook. I uh, installed some uh, neodymium magnets. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of, well, you'll see when we get out there. Let's go. Before we get out to the apiary, some of you know that I, I, I work on. Um, I work on our own Mini Coopers. Uh, I have another channel, Jimmy's First Gen Mini Rescue. And uh, you have to do all of this to change a clutch. This is the transmission sitting on the ground. I went ahead and refurbished the subframe. And I'm waiting on a couple of parts to fix, to uh, replace that are wear items inside the transmission. But if you want to follow that along, just go to Jimmy's First Gen Mini Rescue. This happens to be a 2003 Mini. Uh, the frame you guys are sitting on a 2004, and then we have two convertibles. 
Three of them I bought at auction, and the one you're on right now, the gray one, that was the original purchase. So uh, this was the most expensive, uh, eight hundred dollars, and uh, I've been driving it for about four years, and the clutch finally went out. So uh, I'm replacing it. Anyway, now let's go out to the bees. I know that's why you came. Ah, put this back. Okay, y'all. Some of you know I'm limited space. So my whole apiary is about 80 feet long from around there. There's some hives here. There's one next to the storage shed there. Then these two on the back row, or three actually, but, and then if I turn around this way, right next to the boat, this was my swarm tree here where I caught both swarms this year. So this is gonna be the location these bees uh, establish. Like I'm, I'm planning to leave them here in this area for about uh, till October, November time frame. Um, depends on the weather. Could be December, but I'll take them up to uh, West Virginia. They'll, they should be well established by then. Uh, I have an easy way of moving this hive. I can lean it up, put it on my um, uh, two wheel wheelbarrow, uh, and then I just roll it on the wheelbarrow. Uh, I have nine run, I got run flat tires on there. I guess that's how you say it, on the wheelbarrow. Anyway, I'm also thinking about making a different kind of rig just to pull it like a cart, like a flat cart, a uh, flatbed. Just lift up one side, whatever. Anyway, it shouldn't be that bad. And also, I can drive my trailer right here and roll it right up on the trailer. So it shouldn't be an issue getting it over there. But uh, I see a couple of bees outside the gate here. Um, either they're trying to get in or whatever, but I don't think they came out of the box because nobody's able to get out. Anyway, let me open this thing up and show you what I did inside. Okay, I already had a, uh, a flow key in there. I, I, I've had so many extras. But what I did was I ended up uh, using some scrap and I made, it had slots already in it, so I can do that and pull it out. To put it back in, you just kind of put it like that and like that, and just leave it, leave it hanging. Here is where I put the neodymium magnets. They kind of glued in, and I kind of uh, uh, etched it out. Not etch, what do you call that? I just hogged it out with a, with a chisel, and that will stay there so that when I do close it, it won't fall. And I can leave the, leave the tool with the hive and I don't have to you know, bring a separate tool back and forth. Um, there'll be nothing in, the, in the, that side yet. I do have one XL frame here and depending on what they built up if i need to add frames i think i have three more xls and then i have to build some more so uh yeah that'll be that'll be where these these bees go so def these are five deeps five xl frames in here so they'll be in here and then if i gotta expand it to six or seven then that's what i'll do and uh yeah so those are the two things i did for tool storage, the flow key and the uh, regular, I, I prefer the J-hook style. I may even put another magnet uh, here and put the uh, other type of hive tool as well. The little pry bar looking hive tool. So I think I may do that. That way I'll just have one of each in, in this hive. But other than that, I didn't change much. Um, I'm gonna store some of the deeps on, on the deep side here. And I'll probably also store a couple of extra XL frames on this side. I see I already got a bug in there. So we'll get our hive tool and kill that one. And I'm 
sure the bees will take care of him. And like I said, in this hive, there'll be um, in the tray, there's going to be uh, uh, diatomaceous earth in the, in the tray. So not any kind of liquid or oil or anything. So that's it. So I'm going to, yeah, so I have a flow frame here already, which won't be used. deep frame and I'll put so I'll just store some extra frames and then when I go back up when when it's time to go up to my daughter's house of course the, the hive will be established I'll have enough uh frames that I know I need in here um and yeah so everything will be good all right so that's it that's just a quick update like I said tonight open this open this um up and then tomorrow the bees will reorientate this, to this area and then tomorrow afternoon or early yeah tomorrow afternoon i think it's supposed to be nice weather we'll uh because it's overcast today it's not a good day to mess with bees uh we just had a, a a quick shower that went through so definitely not a good day but um yeah and i'll be able to uh put the bees in here tomorrow so that's it i'm gonna close it up and um yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow Okay, um, I forgot. I added one more thing, a uh, modification. I didn't do the uh, hive tool holder yet, but uh, I'm going to do that a little bit in about a couple of minutes. But what I did do is at the front of the hive, I added the queen right dial. Now, I had, um, I had bought a pack of five. Um, I'm going to put the description of in the... In the uh, in the description, I'll put it where I got it from. But uh, Brian at Castle Hives and um, Bohemia Apiary, they they were working together to create this thing. And so it's a dial. I'm about to fall. <laughs> Sorry. It's a dial, and it just tells you, you know, what the hive is. Queen right, if they swarm, if you see swarm cells, if there's no cells and no queen, um... If there's a virgin queen, supersedure cells, or you got a very good mated queen. Um, and I believe my swarm is a very good mated queen, so I'm gonna leave it there. However, my daughter, I can go up and tell her or ask her, just look at the front of the hive and tell me what color you see. If I don't remember where I said it when I come up and take a look at her bees. So she can tell me, though, the farmhouse bees have a green. Okay, then I'm good to go. And I got a, a repeater dial in my storeroom that uh, when I come back home, I'll, I'll set my repeater dial. But anyway, that was it. Um, so now I'm getting ready to uh, cut out for the other hive tool. Hello, everybody, and welcome back or welcome to uh, Jimmy's Neighborhood Bees. I'm Jimmy and I'm keeping bees in regular suburban neighborhood in central Virginia, Chesterfield County. Um, today is move-in day for the farmhouse bees, which is the second swarm that I caught. They had been in the swarm trap, closed up inside for about three days. I had put a branch in front of the hive when I moved it to the location that uh, it was gonna, it's gonna be um next to the farmhouse hive so they could reorientate to that area however i'm looking at the tree now and there's still some bees flying around the the tree where the swarm was initially captured um however commenters in the past had said don't worry about those bees they will find either one of my other hives to go to or they'll find their way back to the original hive or the original the, the location where the bees are now so they're not gonna I'm gonna just leave them um, I'm looking out there now and I can't see but it's probably a good uh, about 40 50 bees not not too much to concern myself with um, let me let me let me read today's fortune and then I'm gonna get started with letting you know what else I'm gonna do in the yard today uh, today's fortune is 
Wisdom is only found in truth. Wisdom is only found in truth. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. So that's today's fortune. Um, it's already June. So don't forget the Honey Bee Festival, June 24th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, I think I said it on my, on my minis channel, which is Jimmy's First Gen Mini Rescue. First as in one ST. Um, but uh, uh, I'll be working in the honey uh, extraction area inside the science center that we have there and uh, demonstrating how we use, uh, I think I'm going to use the uh, hand crank extractor this year. Uh, we've had, we have two for our local club. We have an electric, which is a little bit bigger, and we have a hand crank, which I think holds uh, six frames or three frames or something. Anyway, I'll be working in that area explaining the uh, honey extraction process. I will probably bring also um, a, uh, an empty flow hive uh, to show that mechanism um, for some people who might be interested in that, as well as uh, probably one of my Ross Round um, uh, deeps that I have here and show how you can uh, make Ross Rounds as well. So, um, but I'll see, it, it's, you know, whatever. Anyway, I have a list of everything that I'm gonna do or supposed to do in the bee yard, but I don't think um, my bees here can read, so <laughs> they're probably not gonna go by my list. But uh, this is, <laughs> this is my, uh, you know, what I think I need to accomplish today. Um, my neighbor is cutting his grass, so, uh, that's why I'm filming the intro here inside the storeroom, my shed, my bee shed. Um, however, when I get out there, uh, please excuse the ambient noise. You can probably hear it now as well. Um, so yeah, I've already lit my smoker. It's outside just, just chilling. And um, so I'm going to get my suit on. I'm going to have my gloves in my pocket. I've got a... Uh, I've got my paint pen in there in my pocket, queen catcher, uh, because if I find the queen in the uh, swarm, uh, if she's not marked, I want to mark her. Um, someone said, you know, uh, she should be last year's color, uh, which is yellow. Yeah, um, but uh, if she's marked, she's marked. If not, but I think I may just, I have, I bought a pink pen because I was marking bolts on something with my car. But anyway, so I may just mark her pink. I don't know. Uh, other than that, let me think. Anything else? I did do a few modifications to the farmhouse hive as far as uh, tool storage. Um, uh, uh, hive tool storage and flow tool storage. And uh, also the uh, queen right dial. I have one here that's going to be my um, repeater dial for uh, the West Virginia Hive. So it'll be up there in West Virginia. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna get suited up. I'm gonna get out there and um, uh, yeah, get to, get to work in these bees. All right, y'all can come along. Okay, it's a little bit windy out here. So I hope uh, the volume comes through. I'm gonna show you what I got going on. I've got two of my XL with the black foundation. I'm gonna put one on each side to start with. It's got a black heavy waxed premier foundation. Um, and then here, these two are two uh, follower boards. So once I get the uh, five frames from the nuke in here, I'll, you know, button them up tight together and then I'll push the follower board. And if I need an extra frame, I have another one that has yellow foundation here. Uh, it's an XL. And then um, I can move that over if they're looking like they need another. Or if I need to just move them over this way, I can put a follower board on this side, you know, and uh, take up, you know, a, a good inch or two without the bees having um, access to this space. So... Again, I'll see what, what happens inside the hive once I'm in. Um, and uh, I'm going to have you guys looking over my shoulder 
And then the yellow hive that's right next door, last night there was a bunch of bees camping out outside. So um, I'm gonna make sure that they have plenty of room. And if they don't, then I'm gonna put a super on there. Uh, that was one of the packages that I just got. So I wasn't expecting, um, I wasn't expecting them to uh, grow that fast or that big. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, uh, let's see, what do we got here? We got my, because the top is screwed down. And I've got my notebook. We'll just stick it here. Oh, um, you can see, yeah, the hive tools. There's two magnets inlaid in here for that hive tool. The hive tool here, that's a J-hook. This is one of the pry bar type hive tool. And then the flow key. And when I close the top, they all stay put. I have to, I have one of these things and I have to find a way to, um, I'll just probably get a, some bungee type stuff material and screw it into the top so that this can just bungee in. And uh, I'll have that because all of this has to be almost self-sufficient in West Virginia. Um, I'm gonna have a smoker up there to keep up there as well as uh, a few other things that I can keep up there that I don't have to transport back and forth. Anyway, let me get my hood on and uh, get to these bees. Well, the queen is in there. Um, she's not marked. I am gonna mark her. I got her in this catch. In this. I like to let all the other bees fly out because they can get out. Okay, I found the queen. I went ahead and marked her pink just because I know this is the swarm. I'm gonna dump these bees out. And um, cause there's some dead bees in the bottom of the, the swarm trap. And then I am going to uh, look in this yellow hive, so. Okay, um, I start every sentence with okay. Don't I? Anyway, maybe I'll change that. But anyway, 
Um, the bees really didn't read what I had going on. So I had to adapt to what they had going on. Um, I did relocate the swarm trap, the second swarm to the uh, uh, barn farm house. Um, I found the queen, I marked her. Uh, I marked her a funky pink, but it's uh, just because that's what I had. And, and um, I just, that's what I'm gonna mark all of the swarms is pink. That way I know where they came from. Anyway, uh, the, the two packages that I install are doing great. Uh, I saw both original queens from the packages. They were marked red. Um, let's see. So uh, they both needed supers. I put them on just to give them more room. Um, there was some uh, cups, queen cups, but not, nothing was charged. So no big deal there uh, for both of those hives, the packages. Now the weak hive, which is the underdog hive, and the first swarm, the first swarm looks like they had swarmed again. However, I saw a queen in there. I captured her. She looks good. However, she wasn't laying very well. Um, and this was the first swarm. But th this one, I had marked the first one. This is the second queen from that swarm. Now, having said that, a couple of, well, when I first got the weak hive, weak, I ordered two queens from Bee Weaver down in Texas. They were supposed to be here like a couple of, couple of weeks ago, I guess, maybe two weeks um, ago or so, but they had, you know, uh, things happen and they had to push it back a couple of weeks. Well, those queens came in yesterday. I went to the post office and picked them up. They arrived safe. Uh, they shipped on, on uh, Tuesday. I picked them up on Wednesday. Is that how it worked? No. <coughs> they shipped on Tuesday. No, Wednesday. And I picked them up on Thursday. So the queen is in here. She's marked red. I have two of these. They're vi none of the bees inside are dead. I spritzed them with a little bit of water and not spritzed, but just put a drop of water and a drop of a uh, one-to-one sugar syrup with uh, some Honey Bee Healthy. Um, I talked to Brian at Castle Hives, not talked to him, but I, I messaged while they were on one of their Wednesday uh, live chats, the stream team. And I, I was wanting to know how long I can bank these for. And uh, as long as I keep them, you know, in a warm place and, uh, uh, you know, make sure I hit them with some juice, some water and some juice, they should be fine for a couple of days. Um, so what I did was I removed the queen from that swarm. She wasn't laying well. And I removed the queen. Did I remove the queen from the weak hive? No. Yes. Anyway, I removed both of those queens. The weak hive queen and the swarm trap queen. I got to go get the weak hive queen. She's in the shade um, underneath on, on my boat trailer. Um, but uh, I really don't know what to do with them. I'm going to dispatch them. Um, I'm going to save them in a, in a jar, though, uh, because I can make some queen pheromone, something or another, like a lure, or attractant, something. But anyway, um, so I'm going to leave them queenless for a couple of days. And then uh, while I bank these two queens, and then I'll go back in either Sunday or Monday. And uh, depending on weather, well, maybe not depending on weather, but and then I'll um, put the queens in there and I'll, I'll try to see if um if they're gonna accept them or if they're gonna ball the cage and try to sting through the, the cage there. Uh, and then that means, you know, I'll check for some more if they started building uh, queen cells because they know now or they should know by now. It's been a, um, an hour or two uh, that their queen is no longer there. So I will uh, send maybe Fred Dunn, a, a, I'll look it up on one of his previous um, shows see if someone talked or asked a question about how long before 
when you pinch a queen or dispatch a queen, can you introduce a newly mated queen? Because these are mated. Anyway, that's it. Um, I'm going to close this out. Um, so out of the six hives, four of them are, are doing great. Um, fair, you know, it is what it is. The, the transfer of the, uh, the bees to the uh, farmhouse hive is, was uh, great, um, easy. I put a couple of extra frames in there. Uh, so I think there's a total of seven. Um, and then I have the follower board and then I have one or two more. But I do have to build some more frames because, uh, yeah, I need more frames. I had ordered, I think, 30 of the uh, Premier Black Foundation, 30 uh, deeps and 30 mediums. Um, I used a couple of them. So I'm going to have to uh, build some more frames and and uh, get them on standby. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Uh, I got, uh, I'm going to check, make sure, you know, everything operates well in the farmhouse hive. Then I have to use my head and start thinking about uh, a second hive for my daughter's house. It's going to also be the same style, long hive with the XL frames for the brood section and uh, deeps for the uh, honey section. So, um, yeah, so that's it. Um, anything else I can think of? No, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to put my swarm trap out again. Um, right now, there's a few bees flying around where it used to hang. Uh, no big deal. We'll see where they go tonight and then tomorrow, see what it looks like. It's so easy for me because I'm right here in the backyard and I can look out at any time that I wish. Um, the bees in the farmhouse hive look like they're orientating and uh, getting their stuff together and adapting to life in their new in their new digs anyway that's it for now uh closing this out and uh thank you for watching thank you all of those subscribers Sub I, I should start this these videos with thanking my subscribers maybe the next time i will along with the fortune um people who comment i try to answer every comment um constructive criticism um telling me something i don't know or, or giving me a tip you know, it's all appreciated because, again, this is year four of beekeeping. Started it out. My first hive was a was a flow hive. I bought it because it was a beautiful hive. Had no clue about beekeeping, nothing. I bought it in. Um, it was a an anniversary gift to us as as a we live in October, our anniversary, and uh, four years ago. So when I put that hive together, it took about two and a half hours to put it together. I did it in my living room and my wife, you know, and after I oiled it and it was all pretty, she's like, that's not a beehive, that's furniture because it was just beautiful. And then I was like, yeah, I probably just need to leave it in here. And she said, well, no, it's a little expensive to leave it in here. She said, so you need to put some bees in it and and, uh, and be a beekeeper. So th that rest of that winter, I studied everything. I found my local club about beekeeping. Um, it was told that I should have two hives versus just one. So I went with a, a standard Langstroth. Um, and then when it came time, I had already pre-ordered a nuke. And by the time I was going to pick up the nuke, they were sold out of nukes, but they had packages available. So I started out with one nuke and one package. And uh, the nuke, the first year, it produced a little bit of honey. And it was that was exciting. Um, <clears throat> and it was a deep medium configuration uh, because I didn't put the flow frame on it. And then the package, it was just uh, when I installed it into a 10 deep, uh, it took them a while to get going. And once they did, I put on a medium for our fall flow, fall flow. Woo. Uh, these tongue twisters. I'm wet. Excuse me. It was hot outside. Today is going to be 87 or to 89 degrees and it's about 3 2 30 p.m. right now anyway um for the fall flow the bees kind of they gave themselves enough honey in their medium to last through the winter but um the first year first two years i put on uh, uh sugar boards and then i switched over to uh fondant from uh, hive live hive 
hive alive. Wow. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. Um, and then I started looking at the different, the, the, the horizontal hives. I like that idea. I started looking at the uh, Lazutin and the um, Lands hives. Um, but I kind of like the Langstroth width too. So I, I made the combo XL frames and I've been using those for uh, two years now, three. This is the third year, I guess, with the XL frames. It's been that long. Yeah. Because I figured if a deep and a medium was how to get through winter, make it all one frame and the bees don't have to jump from the deep to the medium. They just walk right up. So anyway, I'm rambling. I'm a rambling man. Uh, <laughs> Philip from RTX Honeybees told me that in Texas. Shout out to Philip. Anyway, all right, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I'm going to go inside and rehydrate. And uh, I pulled off one frame of honey, stuck it in my freezer. And uh, my wife and I will, will enjoy that honey later on tomorrow or something, another day. Or maybe when the grandkids are coming next week. Uh, see if I can get my granddaughter uh, and grandson. He, he's not likely to go out there, but my granddaughter will go out there with him. So we'll go out there one day. Maybe you guys will check her out. She'll be seven at the end of this month. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm out of here. Thank you all for watching. And uh, again, have fun with your bees. <laughs>